Hey everybody, Bob here and welcome to another Making Stuff video. Today I'm going to continue working on the 4x8 CNC router and I have a goal to have the Y-axis and the gantry complete and have Linux CNC set up and working and move that whole Y-axis gantry by the end of the video. So let's head on over to the table and continue working on it. All right, so I did get some parts in and the biggest part that I got in was this piece of extruded aluminum. It is 1700 millimeters long and it's 80 by 160. I also got some 80 by 80 and this, these two pieces are going to hold the gantry up and be mounted kind of like this right here. Now I know a bunch of you guys are wondering why am I using the aluminum extrusion instead of steel like I did on the frame and I was just afraid that trying to get something this big and welding it together would just be a nightmare to keep it flat, square, and straight. And yeah, this is gonna cost a little bit more money to do it this way, but there's much more adjustability, a lot less labor, and I think in the long run, this is going to be the much better choice for the gantry on this machine. So the first thing I need to do is I need to mount this 80 by 80 aluminum extrusion onto the bearing plate. Now this is the support that the gantry beam is gonna rest on. It's gonna rest on the top of these two supports. I'm gonna have one on each side of the Y axis. And then the way I'm going to mount these to the bearing plate is first I'm going to put these longer bolts in the bottom screw holes. And then that's going to set my height of the support on each side so each side will be fairly close and then i've got these eight millimeter screws here with a t-nut on the back side and i'm just going to slide those t-nuts into these two grooves here on the support piece i'll just slide it on like so and then tighten these screws down and then i can remove these long bolts and then i'll have both sides set at the same height
All right, so I've got my gantry completed. It is all mounted. Now, if you were paying attention in that montage, you saw right here on this mounting plate, I ran out of screws, and I also ran out of screws for the X-axis linear rails, so I had to put screws in every other slot. Now, when those screws do arrive, they are on order. When they arrive, I will put them in the machine, and then all of that will be 100% complete. But as of right now, everything is held in place, good enough for me to continue working on the project. So where I'm at right now is I've got a computer hooked up, and I've got a monitor. This whole setup is running Linux CNC. Then over here, sitting on top of a little box that I've got, just everything's just wired up temporarily, but I've got my electronics over here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure that I've got Linux CNC configured correctly, and everything's wired up so that I can get this gantry to move. All right, so I've got this all ready to go. It looks like everything is behaving. The computer is talking to the controller board. The controller board's talking to the drivers. I'm not getting any errors on Linux CNC, so I have told it to go to the other end of the machine, and let's see if we can send our Y-axis gantry down to the other end of the machine without any issues. And it made it down there. It didn't bottom out on the end stops that I've got. So now let's send it back down to us here at this end of the table. And it looks like everything's working fine. All right, so now that I have the gantry hooked up and I'm able to move it with Linux CNC, let's see how accurate it is. I have got my dial indicator set up here and I have it all zeroed out. So now I'm gonna tell Linux CNC to move forward one inch. And you can see it is dead on accurate. So I'm coming back to zero and it went right back to zero. So let's see if it will repeat this. We'll go to one again. And then we will come right back to zero. So that is very accurate and I am very happy with this setup. All right, now that the Y axis is all hooked up and it is working and it's accurate, it's time to hook up these proximity sensors. Now each one of these sensors, there's two on each side of the gantry. These are Hall effect sensors and they sense when something metal gets close to the tip here. So I'll just take these pliers and show you that when they get close, you can see here the light lights up. That means that this sensor has been triggered by the metal getting close to this end. So what I'm going to do is I'll have each gantry or each axis come down and it will trigger the sensor and that will tell Linux CNC that this has been triggered and then it will go through its little homing process and that's how I'm going to keep the gantry square. Now the advantage over this instead of a switch is that it can be very finely adjusted just by turning these two nuts here. I can move the sensor in and out. Now, like I said, I can get very fine adjustments and it's much easier to do this and get that fine adjustment than to use a switch. Okay, so I've got this all temporarily wired into a relay board. I've got both proximity sensors, one for each relay wired in here. And you can see when I trigger one of these, you can see the LED lights up. And what that's doing is that's just sending a 5 volt signal to the 7i96 board to the digital input pins. And this is how Linux CNC knows when the gantry gets close to that sensor. All right, so I've done some configuring in Linux CNC and I've got my digital pins all set up. Everything is configured correctly in Linux CNC. So now I'm going to tell it to home this axis and it's going to move both sides of the Y axis until it gets close to the sensor and then it triggers. Now what it, what it does, you notice that it, it came forward, it went back, and then it slowly moved forward again. So it comes forward at a faster speed and it will trigger this one time. Then once it triggers it, it'll back off until the sensor is not triggered and then it'll come forward again at a much slower speed until it's triggered. And this is how we will get an accurate home for each side of the Y axis. 
I'd also like to point out that I have got links to all of the tools like this RivNet tool that I used in today's video. I've also got links to all the parts and those are down in the description of the video. I also have these links over on the Making Stuff webpage as well as a bill of materials and a running cost on this project. Now I've had a bunch of people ask me, hey, do you have a list, uh, bill of materials, how much this has cost to build this project? The answer is yes. It's been over there on the Making Stuff webpage ever since the first video. So I'll put a link to that down in the description as well. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me that big thumbs up. And if you aren't a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing that bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.